Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 4 of Forget Your Warranty, the review series for Gran Turismo's selection of aftermarket tuner cars. Some built for competition, some built purely for pleasure of driving, others built for drifting. There's a broad variety of subcategories within the aftermarket tuner range, if you will. And this particular tuner car is more of a street-based fun of driving kind of tune. It's more for the pleasure of it, for having a tuner car to unleash that bit of extra performance, etc rather than, say, a pure focused track machine or a race car or a drifter. This is much more of a production similar tuner car, the kind of car that you could actually see on the street. And you can see these on the street, but very, very rarely. It's an ultra-rare tuner car, built, of course, by Nismo, and the car is the Nismo 400R, based, of course, on the R33 Skyline GTR, which is my personal favourite generation of Skyline. And I would say, straight off the bat, that this is one of the strongest and most dependable tuner cars in the game. As far as I'm concerned, this is a brilliant car, because in the tuner category, some cars can have a tendency to put a lot of effort into the way they look, but then not necessarily deliver the kind of performance that you'd actually want from that car. They certainly look the part with their body kits, rear wings, livery packages, decals, etc. But there's no point in looking great if you're slower than a normal road car. And unfortunately for many tuner cars, that is the case. They're actually not as powerful, not as light, not as affordable as the normal road going versions, which kind of makes you think, what's the point really of buying this car then? Well, in the case of this car, this is definitely a tuner car, which if you're a fan of Skylines, is definitely worth buying. Because unlike many other tuner cars, this actually delivers on the potential which it should have. Now this is a very interesting car in one particular way, and that particular way is straight line performance. As I've said before in this series, and as no doubt I'll say again, there are many tuner cars which are inexplicably slower in a straight line than their road-going production counterpart. This car is, to be fair, slower than the premium R33 when fully tuned. But, you have to bear in mind that even fully tuned in its peak form, this car puts out 805 horsepower, which is roughly 100 horsepower less than the premium R33. So the fact that it's slower is forgivable, let's be honest. It has so much less power. Now, as far as torque, this car puts out 663 foot-pounds, which is very respectable, and it weighs in at 1245 kilos, which is also very good, especially for a reasonably large, all-wheel drive, well-equipped street car. As far as horsepower per tonne, it puts out a pretty decent 647, and the PP is reasonable. It's not too high at 614, but you definitely wouldn't want it to be any higher than that. As far as price, it's actually pretty well priced for a tuner. It's 120,000 credits, which is pretty good. Many of them cost a lot more than that. And the engine is a 2.8 litre turbo, so slightly bored out over your standard Skyline engine. But the question is, why am I saying it's so good? It's surely just a tuned Skyline that has, yet again, less power than the normal Skyline for more than double the price. So what's the point of buying it? It's not even a premium. Well, one of the reasons is because this is something of a sleeper car. Now, it's not a sleeper in terms of visuals, because obviously it's a bright yellow, potentially, depending on the colour you choose, tuner car based on a Skyline, which already isn't exactly an understated car. Everyone knows how good the Skyline is. But there are some, a very select few GTRs on Gran Turismo, which are still underappreciated and, more importantly, underestimated. And this is one of those cars, because this car is, in a very strange way, very similar to the Plymouth Cuda. Specifically, the 446 pack. These two cars 
have a huge hidden reserve of performance which you can tap into with the right combination of upgrades and gearbox settings that allow the car to be significantly, and I mean significantly, faster than people think they are. In the case of the Plymouth Cuda, that car can do around 265 miles per hour without NOS or draft. You would never guess that it could do that, but it can. Likewise with this car, if you just tune it straight out the box, you'll probably get a top speed of around 230, 240, which is not bad for a tuner car, that already makes it pretty good. But if you fit it with that mid-range turbo and set up the gearbox in a very particular way, which I was fortunate enough to unlock quite a while ago on Gran Turismo by mistake, you can actually allow this car to do around 260 under its own power instead of roughly 230 240 which is what it naturally does now 260 miles per hour is not just quick for a skyline especially with 805 horsepower but that actually makes it one of the quickest tuner cars of this entire series it really is top tier as far as aftermarket tuner cars go this is a difficult car to beat for all round ability. The fact that it's an R33 Skyline means it's a little bit more forgiving than say an R32, which isn't a bad car by any means, and at the same time it's a little bit lighter on its feet than an R34. Which is one of the reasons why I like the all round package of the R33. I also like the fact that unusually for a Skyline, especially a newer one, the R33's design is a little bit more front heavy. Most Skylines have almost equal sized bonnets and boots. The proportions are very 50-50 looking, even though they're not. The R33 has a much smaller trunk or boot and a much larger bonnet. I like that look. It makes it more unique as far as I'm concerned. A lot of people don't like it because it looks softer overall, but each to his own. So overall, if you're looking for a tuner car, of course, but one which is not just a pretty face, one which can actually pack a punch, then this is definitely a car to check out. So, that's it overall for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.